Okay. We are streaming. Well, in five, four, three, two, one. However long it takes for it to catch up. So this is the part where you tell me to watch what I say. Oh yes, very definitely. You should watch your language. Oh, watch my language. Yes, oh. because I mean, ha ha ha! Very funny, very funny. It turns out that that video has been flagged and demonetized as well. But the response from INVU, INVU, the response from YouTube has been a bit slower than with previous videos because there are actual, well, mild cuss words, you know, because of your Phil DeFranco impression. <laughs> that so that I, joking aside, it actually seems to be quite a serious problem because the whatever it is that YouTube are doing, um, you know, a it's able to pick up whatever it thinks is worthy of a violation, and b the violation appears to be whatever it thinks is a violation. So, I mean, you could make the argument that that particular word that you repeatedly used is not particularly, um, it's not a particularly strong word, one could argue, but YouTube thinks otherwise. And that well, is the problem. It will be interesting to see if you have the same problem anyways, because I am guessing that you will. Oh, I do. Yes. The, the, all of them, That's all of the live, all of the Twitch mirrors, uh, all of the um, Twitch recordings that have been mirrored to YouTube, every single one of them has been flagged at some point. Every single yeah. one. And, uh, well, I am very capable of not saying oh, any not. kind of bad words. But I think that you're still going to, I was reading about it and these people were saying, you know, like they get flagged. Ooh, what if saying the word flagged gets you flagged? But but they were just saying that, you know, especially if you're, you've had videos flagged already, like they just are flagged. And the best thing to do is just hide them until they until they pass through. Well, yes, I mean, yeah, but of course the problem is that most video, um, you know, from what I've been reading, the way that people deal with it from that perspective is that that kind of makes the videos pointless in some respects because the, although a held, a held video is new to the viewers once they see it, the system doesn't see it like that. The system knows that it's an old video. So you could hold a video back and make it private for, let's say a week for the sake of argument. And once you release it, it's new to the people that see it, but it's a week old to the system. So in YouTube time, a week old might as well be in the stone age. So the video doesn't get as much uh, playthrough within the network, within the YouTube network, as it would do if it was released on the, at the time it was recorded or uploaded. Did you get some exercise, Robert? Of course. Um, Jazz Cat said, don't swear. No cussing. We've had a lecture, like a five minute lecture on no swearing. Wait. I missed it. Yeah, here, I'll write down. <laughs> no, no, you want okay. me to write down on a piece of paper no, what, no. what word I said that he doesn't want me to yeah. say? Now? No, yeah, don't even say that word, even though you could argue that it's not particularly offensive. No, it's going to write it on a piece of paper, but Robert doesn't really care. I really, I, I can, I can go, I can go G. I have honestly never, have I've never heard Robert curse ever. I mean, I think it would stand out. I saved them. Yes. Yeah, that's what I do too. I yeah. save them to be more I impactful. For an important occasion. Yeah. <laughs> But see, we're using Imview Create, and that it always seems like a good occasion for cursing, crying. Um, 
I save my sir swear words for, for when I'm driving. That's what I think. Oh. Oh, so it's therapy, driving therapy. I don't know if it's necessarily therapy. I, I almost never feel better afterwards. <laughs> But I do have to explain to the children there are certain words that you daddy uses when he's driving that you're not allowed to use. <laughs> if you hear it, then you know that daddy is really upset, but it's not about you. It's not about you. <laughs> and don't repeat these words at school. Yeah. Or Especially not at school. <laughs> well, you know, kids kids will pick it up anywhere. Anyway, and, and usually it's school that they pick it up from. Oh, heavens to Betsy. So I just, uh, uh, Jinx gave me a, a, a bug from a customer. I who was building a, um, yeah, I don't know his avatar name. Building a, 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 a table that was sort of shaped like the letter C. Yeah. It's called A. And it's and it's made up of a single polygon on the top and a single polygon on the on the bottom. And it's highlighting a problem with my triangulation of polygons that have more than three vertices. Oh, it's an what well, an n gon. Yes, an n gon. So so FBX gives you n gons, and. Um, we only render triangles. Yes. So I have to chop it all up. And I went with a pretty straightforward, you know, grab this vert and go to the other verts. And that works really well if you've got all convex polygons and gone. But as soon as it's a concave and gone, then it starts drawing stuff where you don't want it. Oh, so it's having trouble to, def well, it's essentially having difficulties defining the edges and um, then the orientation of the faces you, are well, you end up with right polygons that, that essentially draw <laughs> over the space that's supposed to be left blank oh right Which... this is so what are they what are they uh what is that exported from Oh, okay. uh, I believe they made it in SketchUp, but you, I think you can probably Wait, do it from Blender right, too. Maybe not. I'm not connected to the internet. You just have to in Blender. You just have to say, hey, "No, make an end gone and don't make triangles." Yeah. If we build a concave shape, then, then we, we run into that trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because I mean yeah. SketchUp. Yeah. This is just. Uh, I thought I was done. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, coming from SketchUp, you know, there are an infinite number of ways that, well, because it uses, um, well, it does a sort of a NURBS additive subtractive thing that works within SketchUp. And then yeah. when, when you export it, that's where all your problems crop up. Yes, well, the problem is that we're, we're taking high technology models and shoving them into a slightly lower technology platform. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? That is... Oh, it's still wrong. So, are we doing are we doing presents today? Are we doing what? Sorry. Presents. Yeah, we're going to make a present from scratch. We are? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Well, when I said you. it was a question, when you said it's supposed to be an answer. <laughs> oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I nominate Jazz Cat to make it. I, I tried to get Shannon to come to do it, but he said he has meetings or He'd something. Eat a pumpkin raw. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, no, I think he does want to come, but I got to put this up on the screen. Hang on. Before, I need to do the, uh, let me just do the. Do um... you see the remote? Oh. Uh, so what day is it today? Monday, Monday, Monday. 
Monday, Monday. Oh, don't ask me to sing. Nobody, <laughs> actually, nobody did nobody ask me was to asking. sing. Yeah. <laughs> don't say things that make me. Uh, like, I was talking about the tax man earlier, and I was listening to something like that's not mm -hmm. We had power outage on the weekend, and IT has been running around putting out fires all day long, and the screens are still not quite right. Oh, wow. So the machines are on all the time? Usually, yes. Oh, yeah. That's not going to be good. And so, I don't know. It might be that... What is that? Is that like Dragon Ball's new chef? Um... Say here, oh, Battle Battle Chef Chef Brigade. Brigade. That does look like more fun than the cooking games I've tried. Yeah, I did <laughs> Cooking Mama on the phone. I thought that was cute, but I mean, this guy's got tattoos on his arms <laughs> while he's doing his stir fry. I was a tester for the Gordon Ramsay Cooking Dash game, and it was terrible because you know how he yells at people? Yeah. And yeah. this one he would yell, but it wouldn't relate to what you were doing. Like if you did something right, and he'd be like, <laughs> oh no, that's stupid or something. <laughs> well, you have to have the, the yelling part, not when, that much we know. But, but yeah. it should yell at you when you do something wrong. Not really wrong. But this is interesting Otherwise, though. That's like a it's like a secretary chef. Is that like a gem matching at the it bottom? It looks like he's doing a gem matching I, mini game in order to do the cooking. I don't know if I want to do this blender thing. I'm thinking like we should just play this game, right? Well, Twitch is a. <laughs> oh. oh, did you just get a message then? I've just posted to what? the channel feed, so. No, Polly was Polly Styrene oh. was messaging me. Oh, so I'm trying to get her to join us. But maybe I should turn off her audio. Cat Spits just went live on Twitch. <laughs> I got my message. Oh, just now. Cat Spits is live. Where's my message? Watch it. I thought he was already live. Okay, I'm going to turn off Otherwise, we'll get horrible echo. Yeah, and then we can have it for this thing too, and we can just have like four-way echo. Wait, now I don't hear Jazz Cat though. No, that's I was just uh, just listening to you doing whatever it is that you're doing. Um. Okay, go to his channel because here, here. Dragon Ball cooking is going to distract me if I don't. I don't, I can't, it doesn't say, oh, there, okay. I figured it out, yeah. Right. Um, oh, Polly can't log in today. She's what, sorry? Polly can't join us today. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, we have Robert, so. I'm not a robot. Are you sure? I'm not sure. I'm not a robot. All right. Well, there can is, you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can still hear you. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say this. Um... Sit back a little bit when I do. <laughs> Sorry? I'm a couple feet away now. Can you still hear me chewing? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I give up. High quality mics. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, some people find it annoying. I, I don't particularly, so. Well, good on you. All right. So now we see that there's a two-way communication channel here. I'm going to start up my 
Blender. So oh. we're going to make a, um, a simple gift box. Is that what you want to do? Yes, yeah, something. Let me make a complicated gift. Yeah, complicated. How about like a hexagon? No, gift I'm not going to do a hexagon. I'm going to put a ribbon on. Are you going to make a box, Robert? I'm going to I'm going to play along with with cast it. Uh, okay then. So we might do this a different way. Um, what we can do is just start with the default scene because uh, what we can do later is import this or append the end result into the furniture file and then we can do the scaling and fiddling around. So that seems to be a, um, a common way people tend to start is just to start a scene in Blender and then try to fix the scale and what have you after the fact. So they're, they're making the thing first and then appending that into the furniture file or trying to figure out how they do that. But um, so I'll just make a simple, um, just a simple gift box. So the first thing I want to do is go into edit mode. So that's a tab key. And switch my views. So if you haven't got the numpad keys, go into the view menu. Disable perspective mode so you're looking at it in, is it orthogonal, orthogonal, however you pronounce that word. And then any one of the front side or back left or right so that you're looking at the cube straight on and then just left click drag the blue widget handle and hold the control key down to snap and then just raise it so that the bottom sits on the horizontal plane and that just basically uh, addresses the one of the alignment issues with furniture items because you just want the bottom of it sitting uh, on the floor plane. Uh, so once you've done that, just switch out of, uh, well, uh, select the uh, view perspective. The keyboard shortcut for that is if you've got a full keyboard is numpad five. But if you don't have the keyboard, uh, the, the additional number keys, you have to use the view menu and the menu option. So all I'm going to do is add a loop cut. So the shortcut for that is uh, control. Like Sorry? You like shortcuts. Yeah, loop cut. Well, yeah, but <laughs> when it comes to, you know, if somebody's watching this and they, I mean, this is the thing that I've found with the IMVU community is that it's not, specifically American English or English centric. So, you know, you have to consider that the other languages that people are using. So whenever I'm doing these, I tend to try and even though I wouldn't do this, I'd use the shortcuts because it's all muscle memory, but I have to keep remembering not to rely on muscle memory and doing as much as possible. Let me just escape from that as much as possible from the the menus and the buttons. You're the second person today who's mentioned like knowing how to do something on the computer with muscle memory. Who was the first? Oh, somebody in marketing that was trying to remember a password for somebody else. Yes. Is it working? Yeah. Well, I mean, this this is the big thing. I mean, particularly with Blender, with it being so um, shortcut and key dependent is that you when you've been using it for a while you you do you just it's the muscle memory you just know where all the keys are the shortcut keys but when you're trying to get somebody else to do the same thing and you say you know control r or whatever it is they don't know what that does so you then get a load of questions and additional uh, discussion about 
what control R is, as opposed to just just click the button that says, you know, loop cut. Right. Um, there's a, I, I think there's an app that you can get that will put on your screen um, a literal representation of buttons oh, that you press. Oh, that's right. Um, and so I, I think you're right. I think it makes sense to have, um, you know, the menu selection. Um, but, you know, maybe after you get that automatic system installed, then you can say, oh, and, you know. Oh, you mean the, um, so when you press key, the key pops up on the screen? Yeah. yeah oh, I've yes. No, I've, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's still built within. There used to be ability to do that within Blender, but they got rid of it because it was, it proved actually to be quite um, overly sensitive. And it was it was difficult to stop it from because when you uh, with some of the keys, like when you're doing a multi selection, for instance. So let me just so if I wanted to multi select a number of faces, I have to constantly press the shift key. It says that Camtasia Studio can do it. So are we are, are we on a. a um... Are we on a collaborative? Is there a Zoom going on as well? Are you on, you're not on the Zoom, Robert? Do you want me to send you the link? Oh, that would be handy. Yeah, I just, I forgot. I assumed that you were there. Wait, where is the thingy? There, I sent it to you in Slack. Yeah, because I want to short share my screen with Catsbit Studio. Yeah. Yeah. Join audio. Um, yeah, you guys should have like dueling gift boxes. Sure. Yes, and all you need is that, the, that music. I'll play the banjo. That's it. You'd be like, look what I made. How about this? So, but I'll I won't be chewing when I do it. I hadn't even noticed. What? I hadn't even noticed. <laughs> right, hang on. Let me just um, flip this Are over you... to broadcasting so that it's... I see your face on here. I don't want the face. On. That's all right. It's no longer there. I've just moved it to one side. There, now you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. So yes. I went ahead and used a loop cut to. Yeah, that's separate. it. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. So you need, um, I mentioned this last time with Laura's hat boxes that are still sitting in a corner somewhere, um, that you need the two loop, loop cuts because you, you can then use uh, the fact that they're in the same place to expand the top and create a lid. Otherwise, yeah. you all you're doing is essentially um, drawing lines on things. Yes. Yeah, now, that, that want, looks fine. Yeah, I, I want to do. Um, I'm going to do some additional loop cuts. Yeah. Because I want to separate the um, uh, sides of the box from the middle of the box and use the middle of the box as the representation for the ribbon. Ah, okay. So I'm going to go like. Uh, here and uh, here. I see. Yep. 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 And uh, I'm going to do it on this side too. I'm going to do the kind of ribbon box that I only dream of on Christmas Eve when I'm trying to make stuff look nice for my kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You right, gotta so teach I, your kids to do it. Yeah, for instead you. of instead of the mashed potato that you went <laughs> with. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. Um. All right. So I want to get to the um, texture pretty early on. Oh, that's just awful. Um. So 
this is this is where I always get confused. You know, I always get yeah. Confused. So that's the materials button, which yeah, is the one we that you go. want. We're looking at the material, and right. we need a new material, and yeah. we're gonna create um, wrap. So this is gonna be my wrapping paper. Yeah. Um, should I go ahead and assign it now? I might as well, right? Um, well, yes, it won't do any harm as such, but... Um... So, select, deselect. Okay, so that's the thing. And now I'm going to... I'm going to change this color so I can recognize it when it's here. All right, so there's a... Oh, my gosh, that is just not something you see in nature. No. Even the slugs don't look this color. Well, Chernobyl, maybe. All right. Oh, or how about those cans of green slime you can play with? All right. So yeah. I'm going to make a new new material, and that will be the ribbon. All right. So here, what I want to do is I you want can to expand. Up. You can expand that little aperture so that you can see the materials. See the the equal sign, that elongated equal sign, just at the bottom of the aperture. Well, you just added, that's it, yeah. Didn't seem to help much. So where have your materials just disappeared to? Mm -hmm. uh, it says I've got two materials. So I've got, oh, no, wait, that's material. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. default that's pre-assigned, and that's the one. Oh, so what you've basically done is just renamed the one you just previously created. Uh, okay. So here's a new material. Try it again, ribbon. Okay, so ribbon. And where, where'd wrap go? Where did wrap go? So if you uh, switch to face select and then just right click on any one of those green faces That's weird. Okay, so does this plus, what is this plus button? Show filtering options. Okay, I don't want filtering options. Okay. All right, yes, and that's right. Okay, <laughs> so it was filtered, that's why. Oh, so you've got four materials now, basically. So, well, yeah, so just delete it. those. I'm oh. able to. Yeah, you have to be in object mode to delete the materials so switch oh, over cool. okay object mode yeah that's it delete delete nope press the uh click the negative button the minus button the minus button okay yeah that's it because delete is too obvious yeah all right now my ribbon i of course want it to be red so i've got a red ribbon and I've got a yellow wrap. I'm going to go back to my object and I'm going to go to edit mode so I can see my vertices. Right. So what you want to do here yeah. is because you're in face select mode, what you can do is select the the faces that are running up the middle that you created as the ribbon. And then once you've done so, if you just right click that one face, that's it. And then select the red ribbon material and click the sign, you'll see what Ooh. it does. Okay. Excellent. So That's an very... easy way of loop selecting, which is probably what you want, is to hold the Alt key down whilst you right click one of the faces within that loop of... That's it. And you see now it's selected the whole loop. So if you select the material you want, that's it. Excellent. All right, I'm going to do it again now. Yeah. So Alt, what was it? Right key? click, Alt, right click. Alt, right click. Yeah, and, and what you want to do is try and when you, that's it. <laughs> you have to keep doing it until it's right. Yeah, no. it's because, the, the, I mean, obviously the, the, the selection process doesn't know which loop you want, so you have to position the mouse in a way that it knows you want that loop instead of the other loop just like uh walls in clash of clans yes 
All right. Terrific. I feel like people keep eyeing the conference room like. Like they don't know what we're up to. So what you, you know, like, like they're trying to steal it. Well, they can't have it because it's being used. I know. I even put a sign on the door. Yeah. All right. So, boom. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do next, I want to start with just a just a simple polygon, and I want to add to it and and sort of curve around until I've got my well. My bow. Um, before you, you about before you do anything. If you, because you're in edit mode now, if you add something to this, it'll actually add something to the structure of the mesh. So yes, if you want to add something and modify it without interfering with the box, always go into object mode and then you can add. All right. See, that, that plane is pretty big. Yeah, that's huge. Just press your S key and scale it down. All right, so this is still kind of biggish. I want to scale it. So kind of what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, it looks like it's about that. I'm just eyeballing it right yeah, now. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's, that's, I'd do exactly the same. All right, so now if I want to grab from one edge and sort of go from there, can I extrude from an edge? Yes, so if you now switch into edit mode. Okay, edit mode. And then switch your selection mode to face uh, to edge, which is the middle of those three buttons where you've got your vertex edge. That's it. So select the edge you want and then Did press... Press the E key or from the... This is exactly what I was planning on doing. Yeah, that's it. All right, so um, I'm going to go like this. E, E, E. That's it. And if Laura is still watching, if Jinx is still watching, this is a slightly different version of the way that we were doing it. With that. we can do we can finish ours on Wednesday. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this. This is just an alternative approach to the way that we were doing it. Oh, to make it one at a time and. Yes, you can extrude it like uh, Robert's doing now. Or you can do what we did, which is basically collapse a box on one side and then just add loop cuts. The the this outcome is, is essentially the same. Exactly what it looks like when I tied it. Yes. <laughs> I feel like the way yes. we did it was a little more a little tidier and more symmetrical. I mean, it wasn't perfectly symmetrical, but it was calculatedly not perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, but this is artisan. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is last We've minute Christmas of... Eve wrapping. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that this one kind of ended up looking a little bit shabby. Yeah, that that is the reason that I always would wrap my dad's Christmas presents for him. Uh -huh. when, <laughs> because that's what he's looking nice. like. All right, so let's see here. Grab and mid Y. No. Uh what might make this easier is to switch to face select and select individual faces and manipulate the shape by adjusting the position of the faces as opposed to trying to do the edges. Okay. Face grab. Yeah. And then if you select, because obviously that then means it's moving two edges at the same time. Right. So if I grab that. make it a little bit or I could or I could do it over again <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do just one side and then mirror it why don't you delete the, the wonky side and then mirror the other side 
Right. I hate that. The monkey thing. <laughs> you only need to delete half of it. Uh, no, didn't like it. Didn't like it. Gonna try again. But I could I could start with one of these constructed uh, mesh things, right? Or what does this curve do? That's, do curve? that's a, uh, a well. That's actually a um, what do they call it? A Bezier curve. Oh, and then can you like extrude your Bezier? Curve? You you can. It's 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 a bit more complicated and. Okay, so there's my curve, and now we're really getting into That's advanced a topic. Really huh? not curved curve. Oh, I see a slight. Curve. Well, if you if you enter edit mode, you'll see the nodes that you can then. Yeah. What? Okay. So I guess I want to rotate around Y and get my angle. Oh, those what? are your bezier handles. What did I do? Switch to the to make it easy. You can probably you can switch to the rotate widget. Use the widget. Okay. I think if you're gonna That's do it. crazy stuff like this, you should let Jazz Cat go no, ahead. No, no, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> just watching Robert doing stuff. It's a learning experience. It it's is actually. Learning. It's it's interesting to see other people make things because they do things in a way that you wouldn't necessarily do them it doesn't mean it's wrong no, it's just different you know he has no idea why i'm doing what i'm doing and he he can't stop me but do you <laughs> know why you're doing what you're doing uh, it's hypnotizing it's hypnotizing gone, is the word uh he's gone rogue that's the word rogue. okay well this is this is kind of whoops this is kind of close to uh Half of what I want, right? Uh -huh. Well, then if, if you want a ribbon that's that shape, then yes, it's perfect. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because then I have to make a ribbon for the hat boxes on Wednesday. I'm just trying to figure out what's what's the easiest way of doing what it is that I'm trying I want to do, and I, I think I want to add another curve segment because this Bessie curve um doesn't go yeah um, i think you should have started out by making points around and then joining them right and then you could tweak the curves points around and then joining them like if you were in illustrator or something mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yeah, so you make a, a loop you make a loop of uh, points and then you can shape the curve yeah yeah Okay, I'm I'm willing to try that. Well, it's I mean you're in you're in new ground here for me because I I wouldn't do it this way. So I'm just fascinated watching you do it. Well, that's why I'm saying if he had told right. you like last week, so, oh, I'm going to use Bezier curves. Okay, so what's duplicate? I'm going to duplicate this. Right. So okay. if you go into the um, object menu, this no. duplicate objects. Well. Do you want this to be a unique duplication? Oh, I see what you're doing. No, I'm I'm going to flip this over. Right. Yeah. No. That's that's. Yeah. I see what so you're doing I, now. I well, this around Y or X. Can you just clone it and flip no, it at I, the same I want time? No, I around X. Like mirror it. There we go. Do you see what I'm trying to do now? I think you need to flip it though, not turn it. Okay, and so if I go into edit mode, what? Why is it putting that over there? Okay, so you rotated it 180, but you needed to mirror it. Move it over here. And I'm going to grab this one. Where's the end of the other thing? Okay. Grab it and move it over to this one. See, now I've got kind of a infinity symbol. Or yeah. like a bow of string. Like instead of ribbon, yours is just string. Okay, okay. At the moment it is. Well, what you want to do now is uh, join the two NURB objects together. 
Yeah. So I've, I've got these two objects. Yeah. And I'm going to select both of them. Oh, these, these two endpoints don't touch. That's all right. You can fix that once they're uh, joined together. OK. So I say object link, probably, right? Join. In this instance, join. you want them to actually join together physically. That's it. OK, so now I've got a mesh, which is made up of, of two curves. And you said that I could fix this. So yeah, so if you go into edit mode, all and right. if you shift right click the two end points, all right, um, go, in, one. go into the well, there's a couple of ways we can solve this, but try going to the curve menu down at the bottom left there, mm -hmm. and it should say give you an option to close the gap like you would do with a. Is it in segments? All right. No. Subdivide? I don't think no. so. No. I could add a segment in between the two. You want to join them, don't you? So. So what I could do is I could say snap selection to cursor. I put the cursor on one of them, didn't I? Um, the best option for this is selection to active. So the. Okay. Uh, I lost something though. Undo that, Control Z. Oh, so what it's done, it's basically collapsed the. Right. I don't really want to physically join the two dots. I just want the selected things to move to where the. So if I put, okay. So, so do you want the two points to be in the same location, but just not joined? So I'm going to say cursor to selected. Yeah. And I'm going to say select to cursor. Yeah. It, it collapsed the beginning. Oh, undo. Yeah, just control Z. That's because when you do that, you've got the uh, Bezier controllers selected as opposed to just mm -hmm. the corner point. So you can probably just right click the point right. and then so we'll do the selection to cursor. Now and that'll do, the... it'll collapse it as well. Hmm. All right. Then. Hmm. I'll just grab it and move it. not going to be exact, but it'll be closer than it is now. You could probably get more precision numerically. So if you go into the object panel. All right, object panel. On the, on the right, object properties panel on the right. Gotcha. That's object. the cube. Okay. That one. Yeah, you see you've got your location properties that you can, if you right click one of them, make a note of the location properties, you can right click the other one and then duplicate the numbers. Okay. You could, so you can do a copy and paste. So if you select the top X value there, just copy that, All right. select the other node, and then paste the value into the same X value. All right. That's it. Press enter. That's it. So if you do that for these, uh, the Y and Z values, it'll do the same thing. Okay. I did it do what I wanted it to do? Does it still I don't know. It doesn't look as if it did. So make sure that you right click and copy the value from. So you've got that one. That one did do something. 
and paste the value. That's it. So right click the first point and then copy the value first. That's it. It's not it's not selecting the different object. Oh no, it is this it's it, Okay, I see what it would I see what it is. I'm not I'm not adjusting the, the endpoint. I'm I'm typing stuff into the location of the object itself. Oh right. Yeah, that's that's odd. We haven't found a way to get at the points that make up a um a thing. Right. But if I put the cursor to the selected, and then I go here, and I select that one point, I should be able to say selection to cursor. Yeah, but it'll collapse the node because the control arms are selected. How do I select the position of the control nodes without the orientation? Well, if you right click one of the primary nodes. Yeah. Um, go into object data properties, which is the button with the triangle on it with the three points. On the right, sorry. Yeah, but I don't have that. Oh, you don't now. So it's going to be uh, that little curve with the two points at the end of it. Okay. That's odd. So what are the translate properties, bottom left, where you've got the vector? So it's giving us a vector of minus... So if you just click on one of those black arrows yeah. on either side. The black arrow on either side. The little sort of dark grey arrows, sorry, I should say. Okay. Yeah, to increment or decrement. Oh, there we go. That's the position of the node. So it's those values that you need to copy-paste. Okay. Okay, so the values that we were changing were changing the object but the value of the nodes is in that section bottom left all right so actually i'm i'm looking at it uh edge on so i can kind of see what i'm doing a little yeah. bit better if i grab this okay. yes yeah, so if you watch the vector values they change when you move that particular node. So those are the values you adjust to adjust the actual position of the node itself. Yeah, okay. So, so now I've got them lined up in, in two dimensions. Yeah, so if you flip to one of the... that's yeah. it. All right. So here are my two points here. So if I grab this one move it up here and now and here's the other guy Grab and... all right so now so now I've got this sort of loopy loop looking thing if I'm looking down um and i want to select these guys now can i extrude both of those things at once you should be able to yes because it's part of the same object all right so uh select all yeah and extrude and uh, what are you doing it's extruding the nodes so we need to go <laughs> into the properties panel on the right there um in the the place where we're actually at and we need to use some of the settings here
shape. 3D. 3D, yeah. Fill deformed. Twisting minimum. Oh, there Smooth. we go. Extrude where your mouse is just about. Well, I see something happening. Yeah. Go so ahead. we've then got... So if you switch to... Right, so that is extruding on the vertical axis by the looks of things. Well, I'm just making my, my uh, ribbon wider now. Yeah. So, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with that on the side. What did it do with the edges, though? Look at how kooky. Yeah. And it didn't go straight out. No, it extrudes on the sort of the vertical, I guess that is. Okay. <laughs> Can you sort of switch the type of extrude on the fly? I don't know. What I'm going to do is... Control Z. And oh. do, you, if you do Control Z, then that'll... Oh, in fact, actually, what you might better just to reset the... Yeah, reset that to zero. This is like a lesson in why not to do it this way. <laughs> go into the... Um, Where? <laughs> Add me specifically. <laughs> I, I'm not saying anything. If, if, this is, if this is a direction that somebody wants to go in, my point, uh, my job is just to encourage them to explore. I don't want. I don't want to make you do a job you don't like. <laughs> I, I'm just watching. I'm fascinated. Just watching. Um, if you if you go into the curve menu down in the bottom left. Okay. Uh, here we go. Right. So what have we got here? Because what we could do is convert this oh. into an actual. Yes. Try that. See what that does. Oh, you. It might have to select. Make a selection first. So if you just right click that's it do i need to be in edit mode uh, i would imagine so yeah so if you select all that's it all curve extrude yes yeah, so well, what does that do that extrudes the that's giving me a whole bunch of new curves interesting so Transform to sphere, warp, separate, make segment. What do you think about that? That will probably essentially subdivide. How about push-pull? Where do you see that? It was on the menu back, the last thing that you had up there. I don't know. Maybe under make segment? No. It's one of the longer menus. Maybe extrude curve and move. Where was it? Split. Snap. Transform. Push pull. Oh, those are manipulations. So they won't do anything to the structure of the mesh per se. What they do is so that's like your scale rotate grab. That's a... I think if you want to extrude it, that you just need it to be a little tidier than what you made. Like you need it to all be exactly on the same plane. Like if it was laying flat on the ground, it would all have to be at zero on the Z axis. Is it the Z axis in this? I don't know. So like the, 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 the rotation of these uh, pieces, right? The Yes, so it'll be the, the relative to what? Uh, Jinx was just saying, yes, it'd be so your control nodes would be so, horizontal. But that's changing the direction of my. I think you need to delete one of your two pieces. Oh, and don't stop moving them on that axis. 
I don't think you can properly extrude something that isn't like still kind of two dimensional. Okay. Well, what if we do this? What if I go um, select duplicate? So now I got two of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. And now I say, what is that? Draw curve, draw freehand, curve, segments. What did I do before? Oh, I was playing with this extrusion, right? Yeah. All right. So. Uh, He's adding a lot of stuff there that is wondering where it comes from. Those little things are really weird at the ends. Mm. Got some values at the t well selections. You've got the twisting minimum. Let's try now. Well, that's changed the bits at the end. don't quite know what it did it looks like it's adding more geometry so if you put that to zero Personally, I think the way that you were doing it before with the <laughs> flat plane <laughs> was a lot easier. Right. I, I believe you are correct, sir. I mean, Bezier curves are great for certain things. Not this, apparently. Yeah. All right. Yes, you, you'll note there that um, although you've got the, this is one of the things with Blender that's quite interesting that, that people often miss, you've got the rotate widget active as the active element, but you can use the shortcut keys like G as you were doing to move the object even though the rotate widget is active. Right.
All right. So this time I'm just going to go a little bit more slowly and carefully so that I get something that I don't hate as much. What you can do here to make this easier is switch to wireframe mode and then switch to vertex mode so that you're looking at the side. That makes the selection of the end points much easier. And now somebody said something about mirror. Is there a way to say, you know, mirror what I'm doing on the other side? Mirror, uh, mirror. Yes, there is. Uh, so if you go into object mode first, right, create a linked duplicate from this. So object menu, duplicate linked. That's it. Right click just to release and then use uh, mirror. So that's object menu again, mirror. And then it's um, either the X or the Y axis global. Let's see, uh, mirror in Y, I think. Yeah, so object menu, mirror, global Y. Oh, so it's either way around. So if you right click, so it's X for this, so object mirror and then x there we go so just right click to uh, left left click to set sorry I get my clicks missing mixed up what did we say was x, x? that's it left click there you go okay. yeah. all right that's all right for now so if you go into to edit mode now right now i'll be operating yes. on both yeah there you go right. Something about symmetry, it makes it look more beautiful to us. Yes. So, um, Jazz Cat, what software do you use to record? Um, you mean to do the broadcasts themselves? Um, I guess. So you're not, are you not actually recording then? Like the, you're, you're letting Twitch record for you? Oh, um, no, it's OBS. OBS does the streaming oh. and recording at the same time for the for the broadcasts but if it's for if it's for a tutorial it's it's um i use a desktop capture thing uh, that comes with um coral video studio pro not a plug or advert oh that's good okay so i wanted to have the two um, pieces of ribbon go up in different directions but they're both going to the front. Yes, they will if you've got mirror. So what you would do is you you basically mirror the basic structure. So you mirror the loops and the general object in a sense. And then what you can then do is select one of them, either or, and you turn them into unique objects you lose the mirroring and the duplication, but you gain the ability to customize. So they're different objects. Yes, right? so they're, they are, that's it. So uh, where is it? It's make single user object and data. That's it. So if you go into edit mode now, you should see that the other one doesn't get changed. Oh no, it still is. So you must have moved the mouse before it confirmed it. So exit edit mode. That's it. Make sure. Make single user object and data. That's it. Yeah. Now it'll do what you want. There you go. Yeah. So it looks like OBS has something called display keystroke. It's like an extra little add-on. And you might be able to do what Robert's talking about with that. Is that an add-on or is that something that comes with it? It's an add-on. I'll send you the link to it. Okay. 
I'm not totally sure if it displays in a helpful way or not, but you can look at it. Okay. So, Oh, it's so quiet. Well, it's because we're we're fascinated by what um, Robert's doing. The brains are working so hard. They are. They are. The the brain the the gray matter is being exercised quite significantly. Ah. Right. Now, um, I've got these two things selected. I would like to duplicate them while rotating them. Right, so that... do you don't want these to be linked, so duplicate objects. And then press the R key. Oh, and yeah. if you press the Z key or Z key, you'll lock it to the vertical whilst you rotate. All right. So, boom. And I can do that again. Oh, I'm just doing a fancy one. Yeah. Nice. All right. So um, what I've done so far, though, is um, these ribbons don't have any 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 color associated with them, right? Not yet. No. So if you go into Texture, texture mode, mode for now, yeah. So you can, if you want the ribbons to be red or a different, well, if you want the ribbons to be red, you can assign the red ribbon material that you've already created. Yeah. Or you can create a new material that, I don't know, maybe a different color. Can we just steal that ribbon for the top of the hat box? Because no. I kind of no. like it. No. No, you will be you will be required to uh, to get your gold star. You have to make it yourself. I don't want a gold star. I just want that ribbon. Actually, I would put a couple more on there though. Okay, so, um, all right. So now I've got the material. Uh, I've got these objects. Can I assign the material to them all at once? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think you can, not at the same time. You have to select one of them so that they are active. Not. So, well, let's see. I've got these guys selected, right? I You're in, well, uh, no, no, you can't. You can't do it that way, no. Um, so what you'd have to do is select them as objects and assign the materials. So if you've got your, yeah, so if you switch to texture mode so we can see just right click one of the ribbons and then, and then go in the drop down where the sphere is you don't need to create a new material that's it and you can assign the ribbon from there all right and you can do the same for the others but i can't change a different object unless i'm in object mode you don't you shouldn't need to be in object uh, you shouldn't need to be in edit mode to assign the materials so you should be able to do it in object mode I think yeah okay. you should be able to okay right and i just realized I've, i i i i forgot i had so many objects when i duplicated them i didn't make three ribbons i made six yes so you can join those together if you want so if you shift right click all the ribbons did i, did uh, I get yes it looks like that one's selected shift j or control j um good question doesn't look like it's either <laughs> control j it's control j yeah and all right so now i have this fabulous but it's not it's not real textures i don't think no not yet save the file by the way before we go any further 
Oh, I saw a file that where it generated its own textures and create. That, that was so cool. With the colors, the, with the, like, the thing with the colors. Well, you, you could, you, you, um, if uh, once the object's UV mapped, you can use the diffuse color that's assigned to, to the materials as a basis to bake a texture from. Is this one yours, Robert? You have a folder called boob. Well, I, I, I have to identify the thing. It's, it's one of the products that I got from InView. <laughs> well, that explains it. <laughs> it is InView after all. It was InView. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I not supposed to say boob? Really not. It could be like, I'm just talking about, I could be talking about a blue footed booby. Yeah, I was going to give you this ribbon. <laughs> well, Jazzcat already said ixnay on the ibn ray anyway. <laughs> Look at how nice that looks though. Okay. So um, let's go back into, into my favorite, the, the textures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see here. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grab some some gift wrap off of the internet. Oh, for yeah. shame! Yeah, it's probably going to be some copyright. I can make you some in like two minutes. That would be good. I'll make it right now. If you want polka dots, because those are fast. <laughs> Wait, do you need a ribbon too of some I ribbon, ribbon texture? Yeah, I need a ribbon texture. Okay, hold on. Let me just do the polka dots <laughs> first. You know what would be really fun is being able to see Jinxie doing that. Oh yeah. Oh you, you want... share your thing. <laughs> share my... Okay, what color do you want? Hold on, let me find the thing here. Where's the so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I don't stop. know where Twitch where the zoom Oh okay. here it is. Okay. Now it's all you. Share, I'm sharing my screen. You better share your screen. Okay. Uh, what color? Wait, what? Yeah, so what? 256 by 256, or basically a square. Oh, I did, but I did inches. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay. Oh, your inches are okay. What color do you want? So um, let's keep things reasonable. We'll make the we'll make the gift wrapped a, a color of yellow that does appear in nature with polka dots. In it. I like the idea of the polka dots. What, what color polka dots? All color polka dots. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Edit fill with foreground color. Uh, is that shade of yellow found in nature? Yeah, I have that's no more idea. like a banana slug. Well, those are found in nature. Yeah. Would you put some other shade of yellow instead? Or is no, this, this good? Is fine. This All right. Is fine. Hold on. Let me move this thing out of the I'm way. I'm imagining people, you know, grabbing their own bitmaps and using them instead. So it doesn't matter if mine is kind of. Because they won't, they won't icky. want this one. <laughs> are you saying what I'm making is icky? No, no, no. What I'm telling you to make. <laughs> is kind of icky. Oh. That's different. Hold on, I gotta find a round brush. Okay. Oh, that's your brush. What what is this? This is Photoshop. Photoshop. Okay. Let me see if I can um I'm gonna like make I'm gonna see if I can just make the polka dots make kind of make themselves. Yeah, watch them around Let's a little see, bit. Like... Yeah, but I want it to do the colors by itself, itself? if I can. Can it do that? It can do see, look, it's got color dynamics, right. and I can say <laughs> uh, foreground to background, 100%. Okay. I'm going to keep, maybe not let the, okay, let's see what happens. Oh, maybe the size, or should they all be the same size? I don't know. Uh, let's do some passes with different sizes. Then. Oh, they're all different shades of purple. Oh, no, that one's more red. Okay, I'm just going to, now so I have to. Change the color, yeah. I'm just I going. I like this. Yeah, no, see, it is changing the color by itself, but yeah. now I need to offset this. Um, it looks like uh, one of the um, mini me's from Despicable 2 is pressed up against a camera and he's got acne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it is uh, that color. So yeah. choose a different color. No, and... Wait, no, these are all different though. Wait, are you colorblind? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For real? For real. 
Okay. Yeah. And let me just offset one more time. Oh wait, let me offset some other amount like 50 just to make it a little. Okay, and then we'll just fill this is a lot of polka dots, but Yeah. No, this is going to look great. Yeah, it's going to look fantastic. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay. It's very festive. I love it. Uh okay. And then I will send you that uh somehow it might okay this is just you this is fine like i don't want to sh show weird things on my screen not like your boob folder well i'm pretty sure nobody would have noticed it unless you call it out <laughs> yeah i, I didn't <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well you're distracted with other things the people that are just watching might be like looking at all around as i was Okay, so you want a purple? I'll make a purple ribbon or something. You, there's your gift wrap. Thank you. I will make the ribbon thing. So the really. ribbon thing, what I want is, is oh. just like a, a, a border of a different color, you know, so you can have a little thing. Okay. Because right? if you had a yeah, ribbon, yeah. you would have trim at the either end of the ribbon. Yeah. I just want that. Yeah. Here we'll go. I'll make the ribbon, and you can show your screen again. Okay. So we're going to share. Okay, so can you see this again? Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. So if we are looking at, no. Why does it say text? I don't want text. That's the default that's assigned to the original. Okay, that's. Yeah, so you might need to shift. Shift right click those and join all those ribbons together. I thought I did that. No, you they they were separate objects. So if you select shift right click the that's it. See these ones are joined. That's it. Now do your object uh, control J. All right. Now they're joined. And now I go into edit mode, right? Yeah, no, there we I'm, go. That's I'm, it. I'm not ready for ribbon yet. I forgot. Good, because ribbon's not ready for you. All right. So um, this is my object that I want. And I want to look at, if I look at the material and the wrap, and I go to edit mode, and I say select. select. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, if you switch to face select mode, that's it. There, there we go. I didn't, want, I didn't want those ribbon thingies in there. Yeah. So just that's deselect it. everything. Just to re You'll have to do that selection again. So if you go into the select, that's it, or the A key for those watching, that's yeah. it. All right, so now I've got what right. I want. So now you go into texture properties, which is the checker. Right. So there's nothing there because there was no material. There's that default, which we can ignore for now. So if you press the new button, that's it. Now we've created a set of texture properties. So rename that to yeah, gift box or gift wrap. Yeah. That's it. We've got right. the texture type set already to image and movie, which is good. Right. That's OK. So if you scroll down. To the image subsection. So I grab my. Yep. This, um, oh, I haven't pulled it, I don't think, from, from the Slack. Where did you give it to me? How did you give it to me? I thought I slacked it to you. Yeah, it's in Slack under. Oh, shoot. I put it in FBX Converter That's instead fine. of Robert. I'm sure people must be wondering. <laughs> Do we like, oh my God, she made the ugliest texture. What is going on? Okay, so I'm going to put this gift wrap into my somewhere I have so uh, copy uh, so now I should be able to play. Uh, uh, documents. 
so much stuff. No, these are interview projects. That's why they're doing stuff. Okay, what are your, are you still looking for the gift wrap? Documents. What are you Images. looking for? What do you need? Can I send you something? No, I don't. Here we go. Okay. There we go. So now I have dots. Oh, look how nicely it wraps. Yeah. The wrap. All yeah. right. But this is where I start scratching my head, right? Because I have the material. Yeah. I have it here. Yeah. Uh, it even says here, it, when I look at my, my picture of my material, it's, you know. Yeah. My, my, my monkey has uh, spots. spots. Yeah. There. I mean, yeah. it's there. Yeah. But it's. That's that's right. That's the preview. So what you're seeing now is the preview of the material. Oh, okay. Would a sign do it again? No. What's missing is, well, it, possibly two things. You're missing UV maps, and then you're missing the texture, the image itself being assigned to the UV map. Okay, so, yes. So if we look at UV map, we see yeah. that it's... It's blank. Uh, like uh, so i need to unwrap my present yeah so if, oh, if you oh, I got to deliver the line. <laughs> uh, so um so that was the u key for those watching oh sorry should i cube projection it is that right you can you've got a couple of options because of the way that you've uh constructed the box so if you do that and just see what it does Oh, that's awful. I don't like that at all. Look but at it, you have a UV wow. map here. It doesn't matter whether it's it's wonky or not, but because what you can do now is in the UV image editor, you can assign the image to that UV map that you've got. Mm -hmm. So if you right. click the picture button, cancel out of that. Images and uh, gift. Starts with a G. There it is. <laughs> yep. Uh, but my wrap doesn't wrap. I'm going to put your ribbon in your actual Slack and rather than the common Slack. But at least I got my, my wrap on the wrapping paper and not on the ribbon part. Yep. I don't like this UV. Um, I don't like this UV out my. Uh, it's oh it's untidy, but it, it works. Well, this is worse. What it, look at the shapes that it made for that. <laughs> but you might find that that will wrap the texture. Oh, you've got a little heart there. Oh, I see. Yes. No, but but this this engenders anger in me. This is not what I want. Right. So what uh, because of the shape of the object it's going to be very difficult to actually get this to wrap the way that you want it to because you've got such sort of odd concave and convex shapes in the same uv segment it's the lid huh yeah so you have to you have to make a sort of uh, compromise here in terms of how you want this to be unwrapped i want what i want is um, the top to look right and the bottom to look right. So um, you can do this one of two ways. You can either manually select the faces that you want to address, or you can use seams. Uh, speak to me not of seams. Yes. Now I've gotten, I've, it's accidentally selected. Something That's all right, there. because you can use your shift right click to deselect the faces that you've accidentally included. Okay. Make sure to deselect the ribbon faces. It looks like it's also selected. Uh, okay. On the but, sides there. That's okay. it. Uh, 
All right. These little peeny guys, I'll go ahead and get them, include them in the top. All right. So now if I say, what? what and and what well, you can use cube. What did cube projection get me though? Well, but can you kind of separate those out and reassemble them or something? I think you needed to map it before you made the lid or something. So go back in time. Oh, that looks better. No, but can you go over to the, the thing and, and manipulate them? Yes, yeah. you, can, you can, yes. Seems from islands. Minimize stretch. I can't wait to see you try and map the ribbon. Press left. Funnily enough, that will be a lot easier than the cube, uh, the box. Will it? Yeah. Oh, because it's like a simple. It's a loop. simple. La uh, yeah, it's just a simple loop wrapped around shape. Project the UV vertices of the mesh over the six faces of the cube. I mean, it, it almost looks right, but then it does this stuff that I don't yeah, like Yeah, because the, the, the challenge is that, so for each corner that you've got, you've, right. you're, you're trying to wrap around a right angle degree, uh, a right angle for the top of the box. And obviously it can't do that if the shape is to be left unified. It'll stretch it no matter what you do. So you've got to make a decision where the UV will have to be split in order for it to not distort. But if you do that, you don't get the tiling. Ooh, so you can, a... yeah, so you can do what you're doing now. So, so what I you would do, this, sorry? I'm just going to pick this here. That's right. Yeah. And then you can align the other elements to that selection. Oh, it's fun to watch it moving over on the left. That's pretty cool. So. But of course, you've got to determine which bit is the. OK, so there's my little, there's the little blue. It's like, why is it? That's it. it. It's it's inverted somehow, I think, right? Ooh, it's backwards. Wait, was, I think that was lined up, though. Scale. Was it? Oh, no. no. So what you can do here is flip it using the mirror command. So if you right-click just to reset and go into the UVs menu, I think it is. All right. And then uh, say... Is it mirror? Go into... Sol sol is that it? Oh, that's transform. Um, go into the so select I'll menu. I'll do it this way. I'll grab these. Oh, yes. You can do it manually by just dragging this those across. Y, y, no, X. There we go. All right. And now I'll grab all of these. I, I still don't get it. It may be that oh, it's, it's flipped. It's, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so what I want to do is rotate by 90. Is there a way to make it do just 90? Maybe you can snap. Any extra... Can you hold down shift to snap or something it's, like that? Oops, you've, you've mushed your mesh up. What? <laughs> That's it. So press the R key, then hold control.
It's epileptic mode, I think. Watching it in time delay, it's like you say something and then it's like you're, you've just predicted the future. Yeah. Oh, That's... you've messed up your mesh and then he messes up his mesh. It's like, <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> All right, so um, yes, this looks kind of right. No, not quite. It's backwards again. Rotate, control, grab, let's try this side. <laughs> I really just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like a puzzle piece that's really hard to manipulate. <laughs> yeah, and this is only the second piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Yes. <laughs> okay, rotate. Well, I feel like looking at it, you can see that it has to go. So, yeah, I mean, if I if I move it this way, right, that's... But it has to go along that the top side there because you've got the red dot up here in the corner. Yeah. And then this so if you curve. left click just to set it in place now and use control M and then X, I think. Okay. Left click to set. What were you saying about people take their stuff from 3D Studio Max into Blender for mapping? This doesn't seem true to me oh, no, right now. This is perfectly true. That's people do it all the time. That's you know. Also I'm told. Uh, well, so I'm told too by you. Which well, <laughs> you you mentioned the point originally, so apparently. It's true. So what did we do? We said oh. mirror. Control M. Control M, and then it's either X or Y to mirror the. It's still not quite mirrored. Right. So I if think... you if you plonk it down next to that face where you're trying to get it to do what it needs to do. So if you just position it approximately where it needs to be, right, right so left click and set it in place. What you can right. then do is do your control M and then Y to see what it does and then control M and X to see which way it flips. So you can see that it is actually, if you look at the bottom in the 3D view, if you uh, right click just to release that, just for the moment, can you see in the bottom, in the 3D view, you can see a little bit of blue poking up. So the UV needs to be flipped left to right. Which is um, X, I think. Yeah, so if you control M and then X. There you go. That's it. Left click to confirm. Yeah, okay. So this is this is fitting more closely what I, yeah. what I wanted. So what you can now do is select the vertices of the UV and stretch the UV to fit that top face. Right. So you can so manipulate can, them yeah. individually. Oh. Can't quite use a box. Yeah, if you, if you just do it individually. So if you do Control Tab, that'll bring you the selection. You want just the vertices, and then you can just right click each of those individually. And the Shift right click. That's it. All right. And now, in here, I want to say, 
select this guy and now he's shown up yes yeah, so if you select the shift select the top that's it right and now down here this is the guy so yeah it's a box select so he's actually lined up right yeah And then again, you would use the um, vertex select to adjust the individual vertices of the UV so everything sits together neatly. Yeah. I think this is close enough for government work. Yeah. That corner, though, that's that's like. And there's there's three other corners. Yeah, but that's no. that's what happens with i mean it's not the u it's not the uvs that are causing the problem it's the comp that's actually although to us that's a simple shape and we know what that should be like if we were to wrap that in a piece of gift wrap to a uv that's actually quite a complex shape to map an image to and still have it appear the way that it should to be sure. All right. So let's see here. Uh, Especially yeah, with an image like this that doesn't have any sort of discernible, easily discernible features that you can use as an alignment tool. Right. Well, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it doesn't. Yes and just say play fast and loose with with mapping this stuff together okay so this guy looks like he's upside down so if i say control m yeah and then x or y and now grab it again and yeah that that worked right the first time yeah so now And here's this other guy. So it's going faster now. Yes. Okay, so this is looks like it's rotated. I need to rotate it 90 degrees. Yeah, so press the R key and hold control down to snap. So R. Let's see here. Did I get that? Get that one. Yeah, excellent. See? Sweet. It's just a question of getting used to, particularly with these types of textures, the, the orientation of the initial UV that you select and then trying to match the remaining UVs to that original selection. Right. Now I'm just going to there. I've got edges of dots on two of the sides. So now I'll match the red one. So, of course, this is not right. Uh, rotate. Okay. And now it's gotten to a point where it's actually kind of fun. Yes. Yeah, it's usually just getting your bearings is the... Finding those first puzzle pieces. Yes, making sure that the, yeah. So that one needs to be flipped, mirrored uh, along it does, its... It? <laughs> Mirror. 
x and grab uh did it mirror control m yeah it hasn't mirrored so if you control m now control m and x i think there we go. Sorry, hold on. That's all right. <laughs> Great. People's okay. avatar pages that are like MySpace pages. Yeah. It's 2017 people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have to go to InView if you want a MySpace style page. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm actually running short on time, so I'm going to map the ribbon because I understand now how to do the corners of the boxes. Yeah. So have you, did you save the file? You saved the file, didn't you? Uh, no. Right, save the file so you, you don't want to lose this epic piece. Epic. Okay, and now... Right, so exit edit mode. Um, well, let me get the um, ribbon first. All oh, right. Um, and it's documents, images, paste item. All right. Uh, what? Do what? Where? Which? So exit, exit edit mode, because okay. we're now looking at a different object now. So select the ribbon, right click. Ooh. Okay. Enter so edit here, mode. Edit mode. Bloop. Press the tab key for those that. Um... Sorry, I tabbed into the. That's edit that's mode. all right. That's all right. All right. So all right. go into so, texture properties. That's it. Texture properties. And click the new button because we don't have anything for that. So we've got image or movie setup. So and rename that. Ribbon trim. And then scroll down to the image subsection and then click the open button and browse open. to your texture. Okay, documents, images, uh, starts with R. Open image. Okay, interesting. All right. Right, so. In the 3D view, select everything. So control, um, not control, that's it. And then in the right. image, UV image editor, can you see the picture icon? That's it. And then just select it. And that's assigned it to the UVs. But we need to unwrap this properly because it looks like okay. it's reset. So if you just go through the process you did before, press the U key. No way. Oh, I think it? it's right. Check it out. See, the trim is on the edges. Oh, cool. It's nice to have something work right once. <laughs> yes. As Hannibal okay. Smith would say in the A-Team. Um, I love it when a plan comes together. That's the one. All right. So here I've got the present object. I'm going to tab into it. Select nothing. Right. So <laughs> faces are selected. So if you go into material properties... Material That's properties. the sphere, yep. And we can use ribbon as our selection tool. So select that and then click the select button. Select that. That's it. And in the UV image editor, you can click that photo image icon again that you just did before and assign the ribbon. Okay. So with the mouse still over the... Well, we can do this in a couple of ways. If you press the E key now, whilst your mouse is over the... <laughs> yeah, no, that's not... So what you can do here is do a, a selection in the 3D view of the faces that you want to edit the UVs of. Well, I, I, I think I have all of these sections selected yes, already. Yes, if it's already done it. So you can 
just so select I, those I, and manipulate them in the looks like I believe this is the right shape. I just need to get it lined up so that it's yeah on the yeah. So if so, you press the A key just to select them all, or use your drag tool, and then I I uh, scale in X, and is there a way to get it centered? Uh, it should do it by default, but it looks like yeah. No, it's it's. Not quite. Okay. Scale X. So let's have a quick look at the mesh and see which has been. So some of the faces are. Do you see any red? I don't see any red. Yeah, uh, it looks like they are. There is, but it's a tiny, tiny amount. So. Yes, it's um, it's two. The UVs are not separated. No, so you might have to do uh, a selection based unwrap. All right. So if you just do so, one side for now, that'll that'll be okay. So if you right click one of the faces and then do the shift, make sure that you select all the faces that you want to unwrap, including the ones that are underneath the box and the lid. Or I just go go around like this. You can do, yes. Yeah. This way up. I can work upside down. Okay, I think I've got all of those. Right, so, so if you press the U key and then do your unwrap or Q projection, depending on which one you want. It's an odd sort of way of unwrapping. So I think if I take these guys and I rotate them, I'll get what I want. Yeah. And then scale them up. Except not quite, because these are stacked next to each other, huh? Yeah, so if you press the S key and then... Well, what you can do, actually, if you if you undo that... Right, so if you position... If you rotate them so they're vertical again, like you did before, that's your first step. I so feel press, like press the R key and just rotate them around. That's it. Right, okay. and then move them so the one of the bottom corners is in the bottom corner of the... That's it. Then just okay. press the S key and scale the whole group upwards so that one strand of that fits the entire width of the... Yeah, keep going. A little bit bigger, okay. Yeah, and then just adjust. But because the texture tiles left to right, top to bottom, it doesn't matter that some of the UVs are sitting outside in the workspace because they will automatically tile across. Oh, I get it. I, I see what we're trying to do. We're making both of these things... Yes, because you're resizing them uniformly. And because it tiles left to right, top to bottom, it'll automatically mm -hmm. tile across. So, well, that's you just can, brilliant. so you can repeat that with the other. Why is there a piece missing on the left? Because I haven't done He hasn't done that yet. I didn't do all of the strength. I did that one though accidentally. Uh, and you in there. Okay. So here I do the unwrap again? Yep, unwrap and then unwrap and do the same thing again. What did we use before? We didn't do just we unwrap. Just did yeah. What? Look at that. 
So not right. <laughs> so what you can do here is, well, you've got several options, actually. You can adjust them as a group to get them sized initially and then start fiddling with the orientation of them. Or you can do the orientation first and then resize and, you know. Are they are these guys attached here at the corner? Is that what that uh, is? Possibly, yes. Yeah. Is there a way to detach that? <laughs> if you uh, switch to face select mode, so control tab in the UV image editor. So move the mouse over the main, that's it. And you want face and you can select right click any one of those and you'll be able to see if you then try moving it. Great. You can see the attachment. So that's attached to the bottom, which you kind of want to keep because you can use that to unwrap. And it'll be it'll be the same for the other one as well, I guess. All right, so grab that. Okay. So if I go like this and then I scale it in X again. Well now it's doing it from the middle. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's because it's using a median the middle of the selection as the pivot point. Almost there. Okay. Uh, pretty close. Yeah. Now, what is the deal with these guys? Do I even know what the orientation is? That looks like they are all flipped 90 degrees. Yes. Yeah. All right, but I can fix that. Yeah, so you select those. Rotate. rotate. Control. Control. That's it. Get a nice okay so grab. and then just do the same thing again what you can do if it's if it's um if it's using a median point what you want to do is put the median which is the line that goes through the middle of them on the edge of the texture so when it's uh, when it scales side to side i see Oh, but it has to go where? Oh, yeah, this that's is it. Get... So the median point, which is the center edge, you want to shift that over to the edge of the texture. That's it. So that when you then rescale, because that median point is already over the edge, that's it. Yeah. Cool. All right. You know, you should just have your family meet you here for game night. All right. We're going to say, say that. Save that. All right. Cool. Well, that was only a little bit more painful than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yes, that's just because of the UVs. Um, I feel like my texture is a little abused there. It is. Like you squished it. I, I, I can, I can. Unsquish. What did you squish? Well, like the texture is supposed to be, you know, like this, you know, and then it continues on. Like it's like one continuous tiling thing and it yeah, has a little you, texture if you, if you on look, it there, so. if you look at the the ribbon itself you can see you know this is like so um yes it tiles it it tiles left to right top to bottom so because it is it, just colors but it no it has a texture it hasn't like a ribbon sort of satin oh does thing. it yeah and and i think it's probably harder to tell in blender but it's uh but it's so it's squished 
Why is my light not lighting the thing? I mean, I would have just kept it a square texture if you were gonna abuse it like that. Your box doesn't deserve my texture. Wow. Although the purple is pretty ugly, but that's not the point. Why am I not? I'm, I'm not able to light this correctly. It's probably, where's the light in the scene? The light from the, oh, there it is. Okay. Now it's a mystery box. Um, so. I mean, it doesn't really matter for my texture, but I thought we could use this box for people to enter the contest. Right, which is which is why I wanted to get the, the UVs like lining up. And that's why I, maybe we should make another ribbon that has like text on it so you can see what that would look like. Make yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the texture, yes. but you got to make it look right well, on there. I, I, I have I have to fix the corners of the box, and then I will give it to you, and you can do whatever you oh, want. With it. Can I pass it on to Jazz Cat? Of course. The box. <laughs> well, we're just, it's still going to need a little tweaking on the mapping. Um. Well, yes. I mean, if if um. If Robert can't do it himself, you'll step in. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure that um, Robert's quite capable of um, doing something like that. It's it's. Uh... That. I figured I was <laughs> going to fix the corners, and then I was going to be done. I just think because I don't if, know what she's asking. Well, for. this is the thing: if you are if so you're demanding. A... <laughs> but if you're the mesher and all you want to do is just make it and submit it to the catalog, like this is fine. But if you want to submit it to the catalog and you want other people to derive from it, right. you have to think, is this a good product to derive from? And if you've squished the ribbon and it's like longer and shorter in some places and if, you know, and stuff like that, like when people put a different ribbon on it, it may not look right anymore. Oh, you think that the UVs are, are, are not exact enough? Maybe we should put a checkerboard pattern on there and just make sure everything's <laughs> square, you know? Um, we can experiment with that. Let's see here. What what happens if I change this right now? To a checkerboard? What if I what Nothing. happens if I get it? If I get the let's see who do we have um, the test? There it is. So you didn't remap it, huh? No, because you need to you need to be in edit mode with the faces selected that you want the image to be assigned to. Everything is about the ribbon that goes around. The all ribbon? of the ribbon everywhere, every part all, of the ribbon. All, all ribbon. So okay. Texture. Why is it still why is it still rendering with the light? It's the light will influence the scene whilst it's in there. Even if I say just draw, do a texture. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, um, so if we select, let's start with this, and we'll go in here, and we'll say. Right. Click the picture button because you've just loaded that image in. It's there in your list. Okay. But what would actually be more useful for fixing this kind of problem is not so much just a texture, but a texture that you can tell. So if the if the original ribbon texture had some verboten, verboten words on it, Merry Christmas, or whatever it is that you would put on there, then you would be able to use the words as the alignment tool. I can add, um, just, I'll just add like happy on there. Yeah. Let's see, hold on. It'll take me like five seconds. Yeah, that's weird. I take the light out and the image gets big, brighter, huh? Yeah, it's because you remove the influence of the light on the scene, it basically makes the mesh full bright. Uh, but looking at the checkerboard, I mean, it just seems to me that this is, 
for these things at least, this this is about right. Well, it, it is in terms of just uh, in terms of what you had that works, but in terms well, of concerned. sorry, uh, the, the, she's concerned about the um, the spacing of the UVs as it goes along the ribbon. Yes, because the UVs aren't necessarily yeah. contiguous. Further apart, I see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shoot. I just sent it to Davey. Whoops. He's going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> okay, now I've sent it to you. All right. All right. All right. Begin to copy. So, oh, oh, go back to UV. So here we're going to get ribbon two. Yeah, so we have to go into edit mode with the ribbon selected. Whoops, right click just to reset that. Now, what might make this easier to do is to select each of the loops independently because you've got a, well, it's a half loop. I think you actually made it as, but you can right. select the half loop, unwrap that specific selection, assign the image, because what might be confusing the UVs is the fact that you've got so many loops within that that it's trying to UV unwrap. So, That's so, it. so if you use the alt right click technique or shortcut, that's it. Ooh, really? Right. So yeah, I mean, it, 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 as long as the image wraps top to bottom, these things connect to each other. Yes, because it's mapping the image one to one, in a, a ratio wise to each face. So, the uh, what is that? Two five six by one two eight. Yeah. Yes. No, it's uh, yes. It's one two eight. Yeah. Two, so five. one two eight to by two five six. So. Each one two eight by two five six is UV mapped to one face. Is that bad? Uh, not specifically, not particularly. It's not as noticeable with a mesh like this because the individual faces are more or less the same sort of size and dimension. So you don't notice any stretching or deformation as right. as readily as you would with other things. But the, if you wanted to have something at the end of the ribbon that was different, you'd have to do something different. Yeah. But it may map more on the box. I think the box one is a little weird. Like, okay, so like the if you look at the front of the box. Oh, yes, because we hadn't lid, got that far yet. Oh. Yeah. The, it, the lid. Yes. Right. Yeah. So here, if we take a look at this, and here we go to ribbon two. Yeah, I see that has stretched so what you can do there assuming that the uvs uh, are continuous from the sort of horizontal if you then press the s key to scale and then y i think it is so this that's the a right yeah if I if I want to make these these two make more sense, you'd need to scale them vertically. Okay, scale Y up. <laughs> there you go. So okay. Well, I think that's. That's good enough. That's enough happiness there. So, 
So here we go. Now, if I'm changing the image here, is it changing the material? No. So I have to change the material too? Um, yes. A, if you, in texture properties, that's the checker button, you would need to make sure that the image that's assigned to the material is the one that you're assigning to the UVs. See, I'm 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 not a professional creator, so I'm I'm not going for absolute perfection here. He's, you're doing very well so far. Um, so we got ribbon two. Well, that's just wrong. I'm just now I know to put something like that on there, like a word or something yes. to help. Yeah, you. you always tend to need to put something like that on images so that you can tell. So this is not quite going to fit right. If you uh, set that UV in place and then right click, shift right click the two UVs on either side, you'll be able to see what the mapping is on those relative to that one you've just selected, uh, just edited mm -hmm. rather. So do a shift right click and select all three of those. Now, I just want to move this one so that it works right. Grab Y. There, that's a good fit. Yeah. It's as good as my, my gifts get anyhow. Well, you just need to change this, the, uh, that, yeah, the one you're moving in, probably in the past since I'm watching the. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to finish it all up because my, my time has run out. <laughs> like an hour ago. An hour ago. <laughs> but, um, well, you've this... shown, you've shown the, uh, you've shown the principle of being able to do what needs to be done. So yeah. that's fine. So, I mean, if you want to send me that, I can tidy it up and send that back to you as a tidy box. Okay. Can you put a jingle bell in the middle of this, this bow? It needs something, you know. I just think it needs something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> yes, just say yes. And also, the bow looks kind of yes. weird because it. Yes. Yes. Go all the way down to the bottom of the box, to the bottom of the, to the top of the box. Yeah, that's, well, that the, can be adjusted. Oh, the mesh now? Can you just grab the mesh uh, points and change them? I would think you could. Just mush it down. Not whilst you're in object mode. You, well, you can kind of do it in object mode. So edit mode. So here we go into edit mode. Oh, yeah, it's not giving me the... the, the, the Switch things. to vertex select. So vertex select is this... And you will be able to do it depending on the structure that you've got there. So if you have some vertices in that section. So I want to put this. Oh, don't don't start because you know what happens when you start using that. <laughs> but I, I just I want to grab just these guys. Yeah. And I want to have this stuff go. I could show you how to do that in how 3D I, Studio how do I Max. I make the, the circle bigger? Uh, middle mouse scroll up down so you have to activate you have to activate so press the G key to activate the manipulation and then you've got access to the there you go there what do you think now it's buried some of these guys Oh no, still better though, I think. Oh no, not if they're, no, no. Do, 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 do. Now you gotta fix that part, maybe. No, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> See how easily I'm ha made happy? All I have to do is read the word a bunch of times. <laughs> happy, 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 happy. Now we know the secret. 
Yeah. And the nice thing is, nobody will know what's inside of this box. Ever. No. I get them all. Could be Schrodinger's cat. You know, those big Christmas trees that they have at the mall. Do they have that in England? With the empty presents? Well, I assume they are. Uh, yes, they do. And they have Santa singing bajiggeries and what do they call them? Grottos. Santa grottos. Santa grottos? Oh, how yes. quaint. Yes. <laughs> um, the Santa story that I like was a um, Scandinavian horror movie called um, Krampus. Is it rare Krampus imports. or Krampus? Yeah, yeah. Rare Imports. Is the name of the movie? Is the name of the movie Rare Imports? Oh. So good. Because it's a it's horror. It's worth watching it in, in. Is it like a B movie horror movie? Maybe B. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's it's a it's about you know. Okay, the, the, what is they're wait? On, they're on a rain bar, a reindeer farm. Okay, I mean, but that's the coolest. What? Thing. When is the last time you saw that movie? Um, I watched it for Christmas last year. Okay. Sometimes you remember a movie as being really great and then like it came out in like 1986 or something no, and then you see so it and good. you're like, oh, yeah. I thought that was good. No, okay. You'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll never think about the same thing the same way. <laughs> Ruining Christmas for everyone. Yeah, well. Mm. Go watch Christmas it today. Christmas has got some pretty grisly stories associated yes, well, gotcha. especially the scandinavian stuff well even just like bad santa or something yeah. that's not very nice coal is not the worst that can happen <laughs> <laughs> all right well ken thank you so much you're very welcome save your file right. save your file <laughs> <laughs> That's, Does your boss ever you know, say that to you? Uh, you know save your file. Let's, let, let's let's put a pin in that because that sounds like what, what should be on a t-shirt somewhere. Save your file. Yes. <laughs> and then and then we can take a picture of it and we can upload it to Instagram. Well, no, no, we can put it into the interview feed. <laughs> save your file. <laughs> Crashes <laughs> happen. Yeah. Okay. I'm liking the check less and less, but at least we've got a solution for that. Alrighty. You're not liking the checker? Yes. But you're replacing it with happy, 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 yes. right? Right. Farewell, my friends. Farewell until the next time. Yes. Yes. Farewell. I'll feature saying good night. I do, I do to you and you and you. A dude. I do, I do, I do to you and you and you. Come on. See, when I think of, of movies with with a uh, character saying farewell, I don't I don't go there. I go to Willy Wonka. What did they say in Willy Wonka? Oh, he's he's always saying goodbye to the to the parents of the children that have had something happen. To oh, <laughs> and meanwhile they did it the best. I'm afraid. Yes. Did you do you think Victor looks like Gene Wilder in Willy Wonka? No. No. Wait, I'll, did... I'll think about what who Victor does look like. He does look like somebody. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll see you Wednesday. Well, I don't know if Robert will be here or not. He might be in trouble for staying so late today. I don't know. Oh, I gotta get home. I gotta <laughs> go home. Oh. I will see you Wednesday. Well, it was for a good cause, anyway. Yes. Gift giving. Yes. So until Wednesday. Yes, until Wednesday. Bye. Bye for now. For now.